Jason, and this is Clover. Um, she doesn't help me in my business, but my business is um, uh, lettings and sales in property locally here in Perth. Um, the sales uh, that I do through a company called Amazing Results, and we're across the UK. And um, the lettings is um, very much a smaller business. It's my own personal business called Fenton's. So if anybody ever needs us, um, you'll know where to find us here, or Graham will be able to put you in touch with us. Yeah. We're ready. Um, I have um, a passion for gun dogs. At the moment I have um, six gun dogs, I have four Labradors and two Spaniels and um, we work out on the hill as a picking up team. We're out on, on the hill tomorrow. Um, there are only three Labradors here, they're the young dogs that I bred last year they won't be ready to come out on the hill with me until next year. These are my, those were my two spaniels. Labradors in general are uh, recognised as having two different types of, of Labrador. You've got the show Labrador and the working Labrador. I um, use the working field trial Labrador because you'll see it's a little bit more athletic um, and um, not quite as, as short and compact as the show Labrador. Um, the, the second picture that you've got there, the show Labrador, shows the breed standard. I started with Rough Bone Clover. This is Clover here. We bought her at four months old. She was incredibly shy when I bought her, and um, the best thing I could do with her would be to, uh, to train her. She's turned out to be the most phenomenal dog. We've had an incredible journey together, both in um, training, competition, and working. She is my best friend, and she is here to help me today. It takes two years to train a fully trained Labrador. Um, to have it out working on the hill. Um, you start with the very basics, and I would always recommend somebody to take this book if they've got a dog and want to train it. We use various things to train the dog, whether it be a dummy launcher, oops, this one's not loaded, or dummies. Um, and you start with the basics, the come, sit, stay, um, and then move on to whistle techniques. Once trained, you can enjoy competitions. During the spring, we do um, field trot tests, um, and that involves dummies that are either hidden or um, thrown for the dog, and the judges mark um, you as to how well your dog does. In the winter, the competition is more serious. It's, we use game, the driven game, and those are field trials. Um, breeding. We, are we, um, we've bred our dogs. These are our puppies that we bred last year that you saw in the photograph. Um, it's important to know why you're breeding and for what purpose. Um, the temperament of the dog, making sure that they're not too closely related, the sire and the bitch, so that you don't have um, an inbreeding problem with them. Um, and making sure that the pedigree is absolutely right. This is Clover's pedigree. You'll see that in a lot of it, it's got FTCH, which stands for Field Trial Champion. It's incredibly difficult to get a field trial champion because all of the dogs compete together to become um, a, a trial champion and then there are two or three championships a year where all of the field trial winners compete and that produces a field trial champion. Um, when you're breeding, you need to look at um, the, the dam and the sire and make sure that they've got all the health tests done. There's a lot of DNA testing. You can check it out on the Kennel Club website and make sure that they don't have any of these hereditary illnesses that are up here, the, the dwarfism. Hip and elbow schools should be in single figures, just so that you know if you are looking at buying puppies. Um, we introduced this year Cocker Spaniels to our team of pickers up, much to Clover's disgust. <laughs> but Cocker Spaniels will work really close in sweeping up everything through heather and bracken um, and getting right in underneath where a Labrador can't. A Labrador you would send for a marked retrieval in the distance. So you've got two types of dogs working for you, one far out, and in theory the Spaniels close in. Um, we work um, from August right the way through to um, February, picking up for six different estates here. It's an absolute pleasure to be out on these estates because the scenery is phenomenal. And seeing the dogs work is an absolute joy because they, they're <coughs> exercised and they're happy. <laughs> they enjoy themselves. <laughs> we take this, the hearing of my gun dogs very seriously, and if they're working at the peg, close in, <laughs> we do protect their ears. This was a bit of a joke with us. 
Um, but a Labrador is the best dog to have in close um, at a peg if you're if you're not sweeping up after the guns. If you're with a, a gun, you need to have a Labrador because they'll stay a little bit calmer. As much as I love my Spaniels, they are wild. Um, the nutrition is also very important to get right for the dogs in terms of understanding how excitable they can be. The lower the protein, the less likely the dog is to squeak or bark. Um, but again, you need to have a balanced diet so that the dogs are in good condition and they've got enough energy to do the job you want them to do. If you have a dog that is fat, in your view, you're feeding it too much, okay? And it needs a bit more exercise. So, Clover, come here. <coughs> come here. I wasn't going to do this, but I guess you all want to see her do it. Clover, get out. that says you can't cut the working Cocker Spaniel's tail. It's only in Scotland, as you know, that, that we have that legislation. In England, you don't have that legislation. But the vets can't support the, the people who are working the Cocker Spaniels because um, they all take their dogs to England to have the tails docked. And therefore, there are no examples, or very few examples, of working Cocker Spaniels with big tails that, that split them. So, so there is no way, it's, it's a double-edged sword. You have to. You have to breed them with long tails for them to get damaged before someone can say it's not good for them. So yes, it is a real problem. So. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> They're beautiful, but they take a long time to to mature. I think. Yes, I nearly got broken by the spaniels. <laughs> so. Else? Well, feel free to ask Mark any questions. That will be up on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Um, so go and have a look if you want to see it again. Um, absolutely fantastic. And that's what you can do. That's the sort of presentation that you can uh, you can do. Something that you didn't know, Max does, that you'll know about now when you meet her again. So whether you're doing properly lights or anything else. But that was fabulous. And that dog is just wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, just wonderful. So just a wee round of applause for Max again. Thank you.